All right, so in this video, we are going to start talking about power and efficiency. So the last couple of videos, we've been talking about the concept of work, and then we talked about kinetic energy and the work energy theorem. And so before we get to our next big um, conceptual thing in this unit, um, we're just going to quickly talk about power and efficiency. Now, um, if work is the transfer of energy to or from an object, um, power is basically um, a measure of how quickly energy is transferred to or from an object. Okay, so power is defined as the rate at which work is done or energy is used. Okay, so when you're talking about a rate, you're, you're talking about like how uh, quickly something is happening over time. A um, couple facts about power. Power is a scalar. Um, the unit for power is a watt. And so um, this can be a little confusing for some people because we use W for work and we also use W for watts. Now, one is a unit, so it comes after a number, and one comes at the beginning of an equation, and so they're not like used in the same context. Um, but just make sure you understand, um, if it comes after a number, then you're talking about the unit for power, which is watts. Otherwise, you're, you might be talking about work. Okay, so there's two different Ws. Now, um, power is defined as uh, the rate at which work is done over time or energy is um, transferred over time and so the symbol for power is going to be a capital p and so we can write you know work over time or energy over time um, and let's say if we want to know what are the units of power well we know energy has units of joules and time has units of seconds so joules over seconds means that the unit of power is joules per second and so um, since we call that watts we would say that one watt is equal to one joule per second. Okay, and that's actually a really helpful um, conceptual way of understanding the unit for power. Okay, so for example, if you go to the store, you buy a 60 watt light bulb, okay, it says 60 watts on it. What that 60 watts means is that when you turn the light bulb on, it's using about 60 joules of energy per second. Okay, so for every one second, it's using that much energy. All right. Now, um, there is a third equation, if you will, for power uh, that can also be written in terms of the force acting on an object and its velocity. And so you will see that equation written as P equals force times velocity. And this is not as commonly seen. Um, it's, it's only seen on rare occasions, but you might see problems involving that equation as well. Okay, but the main concept of power is how quickly energy um, is transferred to or from an object um, or how quickly energy is used in a situation. Okay, power is measured in watts, which is joules per second. So pause it there and make sure you add that to your notes. Okay, so just something to, um, to share, share with you really quickly. When you become an adult and you have to pay your electric bill, a lot of the time you have to shop for a um, an electric provider. Now, depending on where you live, in some places uh, this is this might be through the city. So, for example, when I lived in Garland, um, I got my electricity through the city of Garland. Um, now that I live in Irving, I actually had to find my uh, my own electricity company, and I can't remember what I use, but there's different ones like Reliant Energy or or whatever. Um, and basically, when you go to to um, to shop for an electricity provider, they charge you for what's called like per kilowatt hour. And so, for example, let's say you went online, and this is just for Carrollton, um, but let's say you you're shopping around for an energy provider. Usually, when you uh, look that up, it'll give you like so many cents per kilowatt hour. Okay, so per kWh. Okay, so anywhere from five cents to fifteen cents per kilowatt hour, and so I'm just sharing sharing this information with you so you know when you become a grown up and you have to pay your electric bill what exactly that means. Okay, so what is a kilowatt hour? Well, a kilowatt hour is a unit of energy, um, but it's not the SI unit for energy because that's the joule. Okay, so one kilowatt hour is very simply the energy used by a one kilowatt device in one hour. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a TV and the TV um, uses like a thousand watts. It uses a thousand joules per second. 
so uh, which is a lot by the way so that's one kilowatt if you leave your TV on for one hour that much energy is one kilowatt hour okay so kilowatt is a unit of power kilowatt hour is a unit of energy okay so one kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 time uh, uh, 3.6 megajoules 3.6 million joules because it's just yeah so when you're uh, shopping for electricity, you're paying per kilowatt hour. When you get your electric bill every month, it'll say like this is how many kilowatt hours you used, and so that that affects how much you pay. Okay, so I just wanted you to to, uh, to keep that in mind. Another unit for power that you might see in everyday life is horsepower, which is commonly used to talk about cars. One horsepower is about 646 watts. Okay, so just uh, to keep that in mind. Now, let's do some basic calculations involving power. Okay, so example one says, a small power plant produces 15,000 watts of energy. I will tell you, by the way, this is so small, um, this a power plant this small shouldn't even really exist, um, but let's say it does. So it produces 15,000 watts of energy, calculate the power output of the plant over 60 seconds. Okay, so first of all, this is power. We know from the units, remember, if it comes after a number that's um, it's being used as a unit so that's watts so 15,000 watts is the unit for power remember you can think of this as 15,000 joules per second All right, and if you think of it like that it becomes really easy to answer this type of question well and if one second is 15,000 joules then if you want to know how much energy is put out over 60 seconds then you would just multiply by 60 or you could just look at the equation for power power is energy over time and you could plug in 15,000 for P, and there's 60 seconds, and then just multiply both sides by 60. Either way, you get the same answer. So what is the power output over 60 seconds? So let's see, in my calculator, I'm just gonna do 15,000 divide by, or uh, multiply by 60. By the way, uh, 15,000 watts is way too small for a power plant. Usually those have like in the hundreds of kilowatts or maybe in the mega, uh, like hundreds of megawatts, depending on the size of the city. So let's see, this is, um, I think 900,000, 15, yeah, 900,000 joules. Okay, so the SI unit for energy is joules, so 900,000 joules. Really basic example one. Pause there if you need to look at that some more. All right, so that problem is almost too easy. Okay, so let's step it up a notch. Okay, example two. It says a strong man lifts a 100 kilogram barbell two meters off of the ground over a period of 1.2 seconds. Calculate the power exerted by the strong man. Now, it, before we answer this question, there's an important fact that you must know in order to answer this question. And if you don't know this fact, then you might get stuck. Okay, so here's the fact. In order to lift an object up into the air, the strongman has to apply a force equal to the weight of the barbell. Okay, so in order to lift the barbell, he has to apply a force up equal to the weight of the barbell in, in order for it to move. Now, that might be like common sense, but... Um, there you go. Now, power is work over time. Okay, so in order to calculate the power, we know that time is 1.2 seconds. We need to first calculate the work required to lift um, the barbell. So how do we do that? Well, so work is Fs cosine theta. So the work done by the upward force would be equal to F up times S times cosine theta, but I just told you that in order to lift it, he has to apply a force equal to the weight of the object. Okay, and so because we have the mass, we can very easily calculate the weight. Okay, and so F up is going to be 1,000 newtons. The displacement here is going to be two meters, and because the force is up and, um, the displacement is also up, the angle is zero degrees, and so we just get 2,000 joules. So the work done, knows that this, this W over here is not coming after a number, so this is not a unit, this is work. The work done 
by the strong man is 2,000 joules. That's how much energy he transfers to the barbell. Okay, so when we say he's doing 2,000 joules of work, that means he's putting 2,000 joules of energy into the barbell. Now, how powerful is he? Well, power is work over time. So now we're going to do 2,000 joules divided by 1.2 seconds. Okay, and so notice when you're talking about power, not only are you talking about energy, but you're also um, you're also uh, talking about how quickly can that energy be delivered. So I get approximately um, 1,667 watts of power. This is, by the way, why in powerlifting it's not just about how heavy the weight is, but how quickly the weight can be lifted up. All right, so that's the answer to example two. Now, the second question says, how would this power change if the barbell was lifted in 3.6 seconds? This is kind of a proportional reason question, uh, question and so I'm not going to write it all out, but it's kind of a, an easy one to do um, because if you just compare like 3.6 seconds to 1.2 seconds, the time is basically increased by a factor of three. And so I'm not going to write out all of the work, haha, <laughs> no pun intended. But if the time increases by a factor of three, that means the power would decrease by a factor of three. So in other words, it would be this power divided by three. And so that would be about 555.6 watts. Okay, so if you're lifting the same weight, but you do it three times slower, that means you're three times less powerful. All right, so that is example two. Pause there if you need to look at it some more. Okay, so example three, or uh, sorry, example 2.5. This one says a horse applies a force, of course, of 1,200 newtons to pull. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, applies a force of 1,200 newtons to pull a cart at a velocity of 6 meters per second. Calculate the rate at which the horse consumes energy. So a couple of things going on here. Um, first of all, when you see force and velocity together, you should be immediately be thinking power because that's one of the power equations. The second thing is, look at how this question is asking you um, to find power. The question says the rate at which the horse consumes energy. Okay, so they're not explicitly saying, hey, calculate the power. They're trying to phrase it in a way where they're testing you um, to see if you understand what power is. Power is the rate at which energy is used. Okay, so even though it doesn't say power, you can infer from the way they ask the question that the question is asking you to calculate power. As long as you identify that, this is a very easy question because you have the force and you have the velocity. All you have to do is multiply 1200 by six and boom, you're done. 7200 watts, which is a pretty powerful horse. Okay, and that, that's a common way for, for the IB to, to frame questions, by the way, where it doesn't explicitly say, you know, find the power, but it might say, like, what is the rate of, you know, at, what, what is the rate that work is done, or what is the rate at which energy is consumed? Okay, making sure that you understand that rate of energy is power. Okay, so pause there if you need to look at that some more. All right, so now let's talk about efficiency. Okay, so the concepts of power and efficiency are actually seen in topic eight as well as topic two, uh, when we talk about efficiency and power output of power plants. Um, and so we will see this concept again, um, but here is what efficiency is. The efficiency of an entity is defined as the ratio, anytime you have a ratio, you're, you're dividing two things, of useful or output energy or power to total or input energy or power. Now, the way I like to write that is E equals P out over P in, or P out over P in. Easy to remember. Now, E is the symbol for efficiency. That's a lowercase e. Now, see if you can figure out what the units of efficiency are. Okay, so remember, if you want to find the units of something, you would just take the equation and plug units into each variable in that equation. So efficiency is power, uh, P out over P in, but P out and P in are both measured in watts. And so if you have watts divided by watts, that cancels out and you basically end up with no units. So efficiency is a unitless value. 
Okay, it is just a number. Now, one more important thing to say about efficiency. Um, efficiency is typically um, uh, expressed as either a percent as, or as a decimal, but it's very, very, very important that you understand that you cannot have an efficiency greater than 100%. Okay, so a couple things. Number one, E cannot be equal, or let's see, cannot be greater than 1 or 100%. Okay, the reason for that is this would violate conservation of energy. So what do I mean by that? So if you had an efficiency greater than one, basically means that, that that would mean that you have more energy coming out of something than going into something. So in other words, you have some kind of magical device where it's creating like new energy, like from scratch, which violates conservation of energy. And, you know, that's one of the fundamental laws of the universe. So that's not possible. So you cannot have an efficiency greater than one. Now, in, in a lot of situations, if it doesn't say anything about efficiency, you can usually assume that the efficiency is one. Okay, that you're um, you're just ignoring the fact that th there could be energy lost due to friction or heat or something like that. But you cannot have an efficiency greater than one. Now, in a normal situation, though, like in real life, you you never have a perfectly efficient system. Okay, you always have an efficiency less than one or less than a hundred percent. And the reason for that is you always have energy. Um, what's called de uh, degraded energy, which basically means you lose energy due to heat or sound or light or some other types of factors. Usually it's heat, usually it's thermal energy. Okay, so just to give you um, an example of that, I guess, um, let me think. So for example, like let's say you, you take a bouncy ball and you drop it from a certain height, it hits the ground and it bounces, but it doesn't come back up to the same height. Okay, and so in that case, uh, the reason it doesn't uh, go back to the same height is because some of the energy was lost due to heat. When it when the bouncy ball collided with the floor, it actually transferred some energy into the floor and it became thermal energy. All right, so in most situations, you don't have 100% efficiency because you typically lose energy due to heat from friction or something like that. Okay, so let's do some basic calculations with efficiency. Okay, so example three says a 1200 watt heater is found to be 30% efficient. First question says calculate the output power of the heater. Now, when you're doing problems, the only way you can really get con confused is mixing up which one is P at in and which one is P out. Now, in this case, it's very obvious that if they are calculating or asking us to calculate output power, they're asking us what is P out. They give us one power right here. That one must be P in because, you know, they wouldn't ask us what it is um, if they were giving it to us. So we have a heater that uses 1200 watts of power. Okay, and it's 30% efficient. Whenever you do calculations with efficiency, you always have to make sure you convert from a percent to a decimal. So when I go to do the calculation, I'm going to write E equals 0 0.3. Okay, so if it's a percent, you just divide by 100 to convert it to a decimal. Now, what exactly does that mean? So that means, let's say you go to the store, you buy a heater because you get cold. Okay, you plug the heater in. P in is 1200 watts. What that means is that that is how much power the heater is using from the wall, okay? Which is how much heater or um, how much um, you're getting charged for by the electric company. So in other words, if I have my 1200 watt heater on for one hour, that's like 1.2 kilowatt hours right there. Okay, so that might that one hour it might cost me like 10 cents or something. But out of all that coming out of the wall into the heater, not all of it is used efficient, uh, efficiently. And so some a lot of it is wasted. In fact, you can see here 70% is wasted. And so if I want to figure out how much heat do I actually get, I have to go do the calculation. So E equals pout over pin. I plug in my values. I have 0.3. I'm looking for P out. P in is 1,200. And so that would just be 0 0.3 times 1,200. Or essentially, I'm just finding 30% of 1,200, which is 360 
watts. Okay, now what happens to the other like 600 or not 600, the <laughs> uh, the other um, amount of energy that's that's being wasted? It's 840 watts. Well, that is usually going to, like I said, um, heat or thermal energy. It's usually wasted. It goes like out into the air. So rather than putting the heat onto you, maybe it goes to the rest of the room. Maybe it heats the components inside the heater. Maybe you know, maybe the the power cord gets hot. Okay, which is actually a thing, um, and you have to be careful with, with heaters because they, they, they do use a lot of power. Okay, but it's not going like directly to you where it's supposed to. Now, the second part of this example says calculate the time it takes for the, that should say heater. Calculate the time it takes for the heater to put out 5,000 joules of energy. Okay, so now that I know it's putting out 360 watts, that's the actual output, that means that the heater is putting out 360 joules per second. Now I can switch over and calculate how much energy that is. So now I know 360 watts. I can calculate how long it will take to put out 5,000 joules of energy. Okay, so I can just rearrange this equation and I get T equals three or 5,000 divided by 360. Okay, so 5,000 divided by 360 is about 13.9 seconds. All right, so these calculations, they're not meant to be super difficult. Um, there's not like a ton of super complex concepts involved here. Um, it's just making sure you understand, you know, what is power, what is a watt, and then understand the concept of efficiency. Okay, so pause there if you need to look at some more. Okay, so let's do one or two more quick questions. All right, so example four says a light bulb draws 60 watts from the wall outlet and yet only releases about 10 joules each second as light. Calculate the efficiency of this light bulb. All right, so we know it's going to be pat over pin. Okay, so we need to figure out what it is we're doing. Now, if you understand concepts, then this is, um, you, you can't mess efficiency problems up. The only way you can really mess up efficiency is if you don't understand what it is you're doing. Okay, so here's what I mean by that. It says the light bulb draws 60 watts from the wall and releases 10 joules each second as light. Well, joules per second is watts. So I could have just said 10 watts. The reason I wrote like this is to make sure that you understand that one watt is one joule per second. Okay, so 10 joules each second is the same as 10 watts. So if it takes 60 watts of electrical energy from the wall and puts out as useful energy 10 watts, then pout would be 10, pin would be 60, and so the efficiency would be about 0.17 or about 17%. Now, if you don't understand the concepts, you might have you might get this flipped. You might do 60 over 10 instead of 10 over 60. But look, if you do 60 divided by 10, you get 6. If you understand what it is you're doing, if you get an efficiency more than 1 or more than 100%, you should immediately recognize, like, hey, that's not even physically possible. Like, you, you cannot have an efficiency more than 100% because that would violate conservation of energy. Okay, so I know some people get confused, like, you know, how do I know which one goes on top? But it only works one way, because one way is going to be the correct way to do the calculation, and the other way is going to give you an answer with an impossible efficiency, more than 100%. Okay, so you can use that as a check on yourself to make sure you're doing everything correct. Alright, so 17% of the light bulb's energy gets released as light. Now, here's how I could mix this question up. Let's say I ask you, okay, so calculate um, calculate the, the rate at which heat is produced by the light bulb. All right, so let's say that was a follow-up question. Calculate the rate that heat is produced by the light bulb. Okay, see if you can figure that out. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, what does heat have to do with anything? It's a light bulb. But remember, 
percent of this uh, light bulb's energy is coming out in the form of light. What happens to the other 83 percent? Well, it gets wasted. How does it get wasted? It gets wasted in the form of heat. Okay, so this light bulb that's only like 17 percent efficient is wasting a lot of its energy as heat. That's why like old-fashioned light bulbs, when you touch them um, after they've been on a while, you can burn yourself because they're producing a lot of heat. All right, so the rate that heat is produced is talking about power. Okay, in other words, the answer to this question right here should be in watts. All right, well, let's think. We have 60 watts going in. Of that 60 watts, 10 watts is being used as light. That leaves 50 watts to be produced as heat. So the answer to the question would be 50 watts. Okay, so at this point, you should now be able to do basic calculations involving power and efficiency, and you should understand the concepts involved in both of those things, and you should be able to work in your power and efficiency worksheet. Okay, now, in the next video, we're going to talk about potential energy and mechanical energy, and we're going to get into the main um, conceptual stuff um, that has to do with this unit. As always, please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video.